Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, Valley Strong Credit Union, California Resources Corporation, Bakersfield West Rotary Stroop Family Foundation, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, Bakersfield City School District, Kern High School District, and AC Electric Company, with additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. Today we're at Kernville Elementary School, home of the Mountaineers, and we're here to... Today we've got some 4th and 5th grade students at Kernville Elementary School and we're going to do a little bit of math. You guys ready? Yeah. All right, here we go. So, the first thing, how many of you have ever played golf? A little bit? Like on a real golf course or just the miniature golf? Miniature golf. Miniature golf? Miniature golf. You swing the big clubs, you're out on the tour all the time? I'm only kidding. So, anyway, golf. The scoring in golf is a little different. Do you guys have any idea how they score in golf? Get in the hole. Get in the hole, but mm -hmm. you can count how many shots it takes to get there, right? Yeah. And you want a low score, right? In a lot of sporting events, you want to get a high score. But in golf, you want to keep a low score. Because if we're shooting and it takes you three shots to get in, and it takes her four shots, who did better? Me. You did, because you did it in only three. Okay, so think about that as you want a low score when we're doing golf, all right? You, young lady, are going to be partnered up with me, all right? So you two will play together, you two will play, and then you two will play, all right? And Bella, you're stuck with the old man, Isn't that all right? Okay, so for each pair of you, you're going to get two dice. Are you good with red and green? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, the first person will roll the dice. Okay, so I'll roll, and I'm going to add them up. Now, when I add those up, what do I have? Eight. 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 So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little mark so that it adds up to eight. Now, how can I do that? How can I get to eight using these numbers? Five and three. I could use five and three. What else could I use? Seven and one. Seven and one. Six and Six. two. Six and two. Could I just use eight? No. I could. Oh, yeah. I could just use eight. All right. Could I go four, three, and one? No. Oh, yes. I could, right? As long as it comes out to eight, you can use any combination of numbers as long as you're adding them. You can't subtract them. Okay? You go ahead and roll. So you have how many? Ten. Okay, so you figure out how do you want to mark off ten. There's a lot of different ways you could do it. Five and five. Well, you can only use five once because it's only there once. Nine and one. So you want to use the nine and one? Okay, so what you'll do is in this corner, you'll mark the nine and the one. Okay? And then it would be my turn Right? I roll the dice and I mark on my paper the ones I want to mark. Okay? And then it's Bella's turn. All right? Now, when Bella goes again, she can mark off any numbers that haven't been used yet. All right? Make sense? She can't use the one anymore and she can't use the nine anymore. As soon as you're through, you can't go anymore. Like if she goes, oh, I can't go anymore. I've gone three times and I'm done then you're finished. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take the numbers that don't have a mark on them and add them up. And that's going to be your score for round one. Go ahead, first person roll, mark off whatever numbers you like that add up to that.
So the two numbers you have left are four and five. When you add them up, what do you get? Nine. All right, so that's your score for round one. So you're going to put a nine. All right. You guys all getting close to ending your first round? Yeah. Okay. So the way this goes is you play however many rounds you want, okay? And at the end, as long as you both have done three rounds or four rounds or whatever it is, okay. you add up your score, the person with the lowest score wins. All right? And that, just an easy way to learn how instead of always getting a high score, you want a low score with a little bit of golf and the fourth and fifth grade students at Kernville Elementary. Here we are at Kernville Elementary School with some fourth and fifth grade students. We were doing a little bit of adding and trying to get a low score with golf in our last game. And there are some numbers that seem to come up more often than not when you're rolling dice. Okay? Have you ever heard somebody say, my lucky number is seven? You've heard that? Why do you think people say their lucky number is seven? Why do you think? Because when they play games, they usually get sevens. But it seems like seven comes up a lot, right? So they're like, oh, seven's my lucky number because it always seems to come up. We're going to see why. You ready? Okay. Here's what I want you to do. On your paper, I want you to draw a line across the top like that. Go down now. But leave a little bit up here. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to label these and spread your numbers out. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, right across the top. Now what I want you to do is in between each of those numbers, draw a line going down. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Just draw a line going down like that in between each of the numbers. Now, we're going to do the same thing going down the left-hand side. So I'm going to put one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way down. These are going to represent our two dice when we roll the dice. Okay? Now, we need to finish this by going across with the lines between the numbers so that we have our chart looking like this. And we're going to see if seven is a lucky number. Okay, and we're going to do it mathematically. We're going to prove whether it is or isn't. Okay? So, if I roll a 1 and a 1, what will I get? 2. So I'm going to put a 2 in there. If I roll a 1 and a 2, what do I get? 3. 3. three. A 1 and a 3? 4. This is too easy, isn't it? All right? Finish going across the top. Okay? Now we're going to go to the two. If I add two and one, what do I get? Three. Three. Two and two? Four. You guys see the pattern? Keep it going. What do you think we're going to do on this row of three? Three plus one. So we're going to go three plus one is four. So finish filling out the whole chart. And you'll notice that every time you go over and down one, the numbers increase, right? It's just a pattern, you just keep on going. All you're doing is making a, a chart, a graph of when you roll the two dice, what the sum will be when you add the two dice together. As you're filling it in, completing it, what I want you to do is I want you to look at your chart now, right? Find which number on the inside, okay? We're not counting these numbers. Right? These are the two dice. We're looking at the sums inside. Find which number comes up the most. Hold on, give everybody a shot at it first. So on your graph, look and see which number comes up the most times. Which number do you think comes up the most? Seven. What did you find came up the most? Seven. Did you find the same thing? Mm -hmm. You too? You found seven the most? Why do you think seven comes up the most? Because it's lucky? 
luck doesn't have anything to do with it, right? Why does seven come up the most on this? Because in, um, if every dice you roll, it can be seven, but um, if it's like you roll one and a one of key, um, it can't be. Right, because so. if somebody said, we're going to roll two dice, you get to pick a number. You should pick seven because it comes up the most often, right? And if, let's say somebody goes, oh, seven's already taken. What number comes up the next most? Eight. Eight and six. six, because it's on either side of seven. All right, you guys get the idea? Yeah. So you can take a look, you can mathematically prove that seven comes up the most. That's why people think seven is their lucky number. And that, a little bit more math with the fourth and fifth grade students at Kernville Elementary School. Closer, 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 closer. Good job. All right, back at Kernville Elementary School with some fourth and fifth grade students, and we've been doing some adding and then proving why seven is a lucky number, right? Uh, but now we're going to do a little multiplying. You guys all know how to multiply, right? Yes. Yeah. You guys have all heard of two times two is four, two times three is six, right? You did all the multiplication five tables? Five right, times 525 squared numbers and things like that, all right? This is going to be a little different. So go ahead and take a look at the paper you've got, all right? So it says shape times shape. Now we see that we have a square times a square times a square is going to equal a half circle. Well, that doesn't make much sense right now, does it? Nope. But we know that the squares are all the same. So that means the number that a square represents must be the same. So try this, okay? If I went two times two is what? Four. Four times two. Six is eight, right? Because I'm going to go on four times two is eight. You guys got the idea so far? Yeah. So if I say on my paper that a square is equal to two, then what does a half circle have to be? Eight. Eight. Okay. Now I'm going to test it. Okay. If a half circle is eight, what does that half circle have to be? Eight. Eight. It has to be eight. Everybody with me? Because four plus four equals eight, so it can't be a full circle, it has to be a half circle, because that right? Could be. We'll find out, all right? Now we know that a square is equal to what? Two. 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 So if I say this is two and that's eight, what does that oval have to be? Six. Two times what? is eight. Four. So we're going to say an oval is what? Four. So on my paper, I'm going to draw an oval and I'm going to put four. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. Okay, so what I want you to do is on your papers, because you have a little bit of space on your paper down at the bottom, right? And we can go ahead and we can start like I did, right? So draw a little square, draw a symbol for a square, and you're going to put that a square is equal to two. Do we all agree with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. all right, we're all good with that. We also said that this little half circle, right, when we go two times two is four times two is eight. So we all agree that the half circle is eight. All right? So that satisfies this first equation. Even though there are no numbers, we appointed numbers to those different figures. We know that the half circle is eight. We know the circle is two, so two times four. four. So we know the little oval is four. All right, so you can make an oval and put equals four. All right? So now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to see how far you can get. Okay, because we've done these so far. Okay, so now you want to look and test it. Okay, because the way we started, does it mean that it's already correct? It works so far, right? But does it mean it's perfectly correct? 
It may not be, right? We can only know if we keep testing. I think I know what the circle is. You think? Yeah. What do you think? 16. Well, I want you guys to go ahead and try them, okay? On your paper, just see if you can kind of start figuring out what the other shapes are equal to. All right, you can work together, you can work individually, however you want to work on this, all right? So go ahead and give it a try. Anybody have an idea on some of the other shapes, what they might be? Because this is really, you're trying to think a lot about how, what can you do to make these work. I think the square could be two because two times whatever that is can't be that same number again, whatever that is, unless it's a zero. Could we have a zero? Yes. Is zero a number? It could work, right? But when you multiply anything by zero, it's zero. Well, take a look at the one he was talking about, right? Because if we go two times zero, what is that going to equal? Zero. Zero. So that would work, right? Here's what I want you to do. Take the blue rectangle and make it a three. If the blue rectangle is three, what is a red circle worth? Twelve. 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 You guys all get it? All right, there you go. Learning, this is the first step to algebra. Instead of taking shapes, you're gonna be taking letters that are gonna represent numbers. A little bit more math with the students at Kernville Elementary School. All right, here we are once again. We've got some fourth and fifth grade students at Kernville Elementary School. You guys ready for your final activity? Yeah. Yep. How many of you have ever done logic before? You're like, I don't know what you're talking about, right? Nope. Okay, well, let's take a look at what we're going to do. All right, so take a look at the card that you have with your partner. Up at the top, so you and I, Bella, are gonna work together, all right? So on this one, it says we need two white, two black, one red, and one orange, okay? It gives you clues. What you want to do with your partner is place these markers in the appropriate spots so that it satisfies all of the clues on your card. So you have to think. Now the first one, what does that say, Bella? So read number one, the whole thing, clue one. The white chips are in the same row, but do not touch. So the white chips are in the same row. So take the white ones. Now a row, now you need to know the vocabulary. A row goes across. A column goes up and down. Okay, so let's see. Clue one. So read it again. The white chips are in the same row, but do not touch. So are they in the same row? But are they touching? So if they're next to each other, they're touching. So what do you need to do? There you go. All right, do you guys get the idea? Yeah. So you need to know the difference between a row and a column. Touching doesn't mean they actually have to be like this. Okay, if they're next to each other, that's touching. Okay? So with your partner, go ahead and start working on the clues and we'll see if you can fill in your card all correct. You finished? Yeah. Did you check it? We'll double check. Wait, double check it one more time. Uh, what number do you have? It's below it. We have number the green three. Is All right, so it should say black, so orange, orange, yellow. Yes. Yeah. The second row, red, orange, red, blue. orange blue. Oh, blue. 
Try putting a blue there. And then purple, green, white. There you go. Now check all of them to make sure that it satisfies it perfectly. We finished. You finished? All right, number one should say blue, green, orange. Oh, so put an orange up there and try it again. Yellow, white, black. Yeah. Red, red, purple. Okay, so that's how it was, but then we got... You had it like that? Yeah. All right. So let's find out the last group. You guys all finished down there? Almost. Keep going. All right. You should have a row of red, red, red. Blue, yellow, black. Nope. We're messed up. All right. So you guys are going to work on yours a little bit more? All right, so we'll let that group keep on going. And you guys have worked figuring out with these logic problems and the clues how to solve a logic problem. And those are the fourth and fifth grade students at Kernville Elementary School. This was made last night specifically <laughs> for you. <laughs> and what are you laughing at? <laughs>